Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Humphrey and I make videos here on YouTube on personal finance and entrepreneurship. Today, I really wanna walk you guys through a super simple and effective strategy for investing that's really solid for beginners because one, you don't have to do much, so it's really good for someone that's lazy like me. And two, you don't have to dedicate hours every week or every day into researching what to invest in. If you're someone that's new to investing that just wants a solid investing strategy that's mathematically proven to outperform the market over a long period of time, then this strategy, which is the three fund portfolio, is the strategy for you. It's what I personally use and I'm gonna go through today what a three fund portfolio is exactly comprised of how you're gonna set one up, why it's one of the best investing strategies out there for the long term, and why it's so simple. At the end of the video, we'll go over some of the frequently asked questions that people ask about the three fund portfolio. And now this strategy isn't gonna get you rich quick overnight, but it is a really good strategy to get you rich over a long period of time, let's say 10, 20, 30 years down the line. So what is a three fund portfolio? Basically what we're gonna be doing is buying three different types of Vanguard index funds in a three fund portfolio. One for the domestic US stock market, one for the international stock market, and one which is a bond fund. The ticker symbols that most people buy for their three fund portfolio are VTSAX, which stands for Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, VTIAX, which stands for Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund, and the last one is VBTLX, which stands for Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know what an index fund is, but basically a quick overview is that an index fund is a type of security that you buy and if you buy that one index fund, you actually own a small percentage of everything that it actually owns in the index fund itself. So in the case of VTSAX, they actually own, by buying VTSAX, they actually own 3,531 US stocks that you can buy into just by buying that index fund. So in a little bit, I'm gonna explain how to buy these index funds. And if you don't have access to these certain index funds, you can just buy the alternative ETFs that are mostly available at every brokerage. We'll also talk about how much money you should allocate towards each index fund, depending on how aggressive or not aggressive you wanna be and how much risk tolerance that you actually have. But for now, let's discuss why the three fund portfolio reigns supreme and why I think it is the best choice for beginners and actually for a lot of people, not even just beginners, but for a lot of people that just wanna have a solid investing strategy for a long period of time. So when it comes to investing, I like to think about what gives me the best opportunity for the least amount of risk or what is the best type of value in terms of the investing that I can do for the risk that I am gonna take. And this is why it's such a great investment strategy. One, it's simple. Two, it's really well diversified because you're buying index funds, you're buying a lot of underlying assets so it's well diversified by nature by buying the index funds three it is low fees vanguard index funds typically have the lowest fees of any other index fund or any other type of mutual fund or etf security on the market and four that just means there's a good risk to reward ratio another thing i want to point out when it comes to this strategy is that there's no such thing as manager risk so when you're buying an index fund it's passively managed but when you buy a mutual fund for example you'll have a professional manager of that fund, which typically means higher fees, and two, you're subject to human error. And the last why I think that you should actually own a three fund portfolio is because it offers pretty good returns. On average, it beats the market over a long period of time for a very little amount of work. You literally just buy three funds and you kind of set it and you forget it. So that kind of leads me into my next talking point here, which is how do we actually allocate our three fund portfolio? When it comes to allocating our money in the three fund portfolio, there are a bunch of different strategies that you can pursue. Typically, if you're more aggressive, you wanna choose a portfolio that is heavily weighted in stocks. And then if you're less aggressive, you're gonna choose a portfolio that has a higher percentage of bonds. So a bond is basically an IOU from one borrower to another in exchange for interest. And so if you are the borrower, you're actually just collecting interest on your bond. Now, bond Bonds are typically issued by the US government or large corporations, so they are considered very safe investments and investments that are very predictable. The reason why you would include a bond fund in your three fund portfolio is to kind of lower the overall volatility of your portfolio and to provide some sort of conservative strategy in addition to the more aggressive strategy that you are going to be pursuing with the total US stock market index funds 
and the International Stock Market Index Funds. These days, however, I would offer a slight modification, which is to have a very small percentage of your portfolio actually in bonds because interest rates are so low in the United States right now, bonds are not paying a high return. I don't know how long interest rates are gonna be this low, but that's typically when you wanna have a bond is when interest rates are a little higher. So the fact that interest rates are really low right now means that the bond fund in your portfolio is gonna be less attractive. Now, in terms of how much of a US stock and international stock allocation you're gonna to wanna to have in the three fund portfolio, first, we gotta decide how risky we wanna be. I would say if you are someone that is younger, like under the age of 30 or under the age of 25, you can actually afford to be more risky because you have a lot more time left before you actually retire. You might not need the money right away, so when you're younger, you can afford to take more risk to get higher returns early on. And as you get older, you can shift your investment strategy more towards a conservative model because as you get older and you're closer to retirement, you might need that money sooner rather than later. So an aggressive three fund portfolio right now looks like 60% US stocks, 30% international stocks, and 10% in bonds. So when I say 60, 30, 10, I just mean, you know, if you you have $10,000 to invest, you're gonna put 60% of it into US stocks, so that would be $6,000. 30% into international stocks, $3,000, and 10% into bonds, $1,000. In terms of how much money you wanna to allocate towards US and versus international, that's totally up to you. It totally depends on how much you think the US stock market's gonna grow versus international stocks are. And I personally like to wait a little bit heavier in US stocks just because I know the US market really well and I'm more familiar with it, and I think that over time, I know that the return of the US stock market over a longer period of time, let's say 30 years, is gonna be about 8% or a little higher. So now let's look at the historical returns by year of Vanguard index funds in a three fund portfolio with different allocations. Now this table starts from 1997 all the way up to 2019, and we'll get to see year by year how each one does. In 2019, an 80-20 portfolio, which means 80% stocks, 20% bonds, returned 24.15%. In 2018, it actually was down 6.36%. In 2017, it was up 19.05%, and so on and so forth. As you can see, as we scroll down here, we can see the different types of breakdowns of percentage returns by year, depending on the portfolio allocation. And you can see that not every year is an up year, but the majority of them are. And that's what you're gonna see with a three fund portfolio. And that's what you're gonna see with this investing strategy is that as long as most of the years are in the green, and they're making up for the years that you are actually in the red, it's gonna be better overall in the long term. You can see that when a portfolio is 20% stocks, 80% bonds, that the volatility is not very high of the portfolio itself. Typically the returns are between zero and 10%. We can see that some years, you know, it's down 3%, down 1% here and there, but in general, it's pretty stable, which is pretty cool. All right, so now let's answer some quick FAQs on the three fund portfolio. And the first question is, what are the ETF equivalents? Now this is important because Vanguard index funds are only available at Vanguard, Fidelity, or TD Ameritrade. So I'm gonna put them up on the screen, but the ETF versions of VTSAX, VTIAX, and VBTLX are VTI, VXUS, and BND. I also wanna note that an index fund typically has a minimum investment required. It's typically, I think, $2,000 to $3,000. So an ETF equivalent is a cheaper way to get into this three fund portfolio. The second question I get a lot is, is that, well, Humphrey, the market's really high right now. When should I actually buy into the market? Because I don't really wanna buy it when it's at its all time high. I definitely understand this. I definitely can understand, okay, you don't wanna buy into something and then all of a sudden see it drop the next day. But the old adage is, is that time in the market beats timing the market. And I absolutely think this is true. Basically the market today, relative to what the market is actually gonna be like in 30 years is relatively low. So as long as you buy and hold for a long period of time, I think that is probably the best strategy here. If you really want, you can dollar cost average into the market over a longer period of time. Dollar cost averaging just means that you spread out your fund purchases in regular intervals in equal amounts so that you basically smooth out the price that you pay for the funds that you're buying. The next question is, should I buy these in a Roth IRA or an IRA? I would say yes, it's always good to put your retirement investments into a Roth or a traditional IRA. However, if you don't have that ability or you'd already maxed out your IRA or your Roth IRA, it's you can always just buy it in a brokerage account. The fourth question is, how consistent should I be? I would just say, if you can be as consistent as possible with your savings and your investments, you're gonna be better off in the long run. Fifth question is, which brokerage 
should I use if I don't have Vanguard? Well, if you don't have Vanguard, you can try Fidelity or TD Ameritrade, like I said before, to get access to those Vanguard index funds. If you just want an easy beginner platform to start with, you can download Robinhood. Robinhood is a really easy brokerage to use. It has a really easy user interface and makes it really simple for anybody that's really new to investing. Um, I do have a referral code for Robinhood. I'll put the link in the description below. If you do use it, I think you get a free stock. You don't have to use it, but if you want to, it's in the description below. Okay, guys, thanks for being here with me today. I'm gonna leave some resources for you guys in the description below of the three fund portfolio and the different types of allocations that you can pursue. I hope that you got some value out of this video. Make sure to leave me a comment if you have any questions and also follow me on Instagram. I post there pretty much all the time. So if you'd like to be a part of it there, I'd love to see you guys there.